Visit my fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of October 20th, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And as we start this week, the dominant energy certainly is Venus. Right out of the gate, Venus will be speaking in harmony with Saturn. Now, it is Saturn that is a very stabilizing energy. Venus, of course, goddess of love, and heart we're bringing a lot of love and finding ways to manifest that love in a practical sense in our lives and immediately after it is going to be venus that connects in supreme harmony with neptune before moving on midweek to connect in harmony with pluto now i actually think of these energies of these connections that venus is going to have it is the neptunian connection that is the most powerful and that is for a few reasons. Uh, for one, Neptune is very strong in this alliance. Neptune is in its home sign. Uh, Neptune is also uh, in a water sign as well. It's a slower moving planet, it's an outer planet. And all of these factors make it in a stronger position. And then we have Venus. Venus is in a sign right now that uh, the ancients believed she wouldn't necessarily be as comfortable in. And that is because the sign of Scorpio, where Venus is right now, its ancient ruling planet is Mars. And Mars and Venus have often been conceptualized, especially by the ancients, uh, as contrasting energies. Whereas Mars is very much an active principle, it is Venus that is a lot more receptive. Where Mars pursues and conquers, it is Venus that attracts and allows. And so you can see how with Venus moving through the sign or an area of the sky that has to do with, that has an ancient alliance with Mars, a very contrasting energy, you can see how maybe she doesn't necessarily uh, feel as comfortable or as easy bringing forward her very best qualities. And that really is okay. What she can bring forward in this part of the sky can be incredibly valuable as well. The sign of Scorpio is, of course, about truth. That really is what it comes down to with this sign. It's about the core and the center and understanding what is really going on. It is about moving beyond illusions and seeing the nitty gritty, the thing that other people might reject and seeing the beauty in that. And that is part of the reason why the energy of Scorpio is often associated with what we call the taboo because it is about finding beauty in those places that some people don't want to look, whether it's within ourselves or in the world. And then you have Neptune in the sign of Pisces, and that is all about the illusion. It is all about the big, big picture. It's not about getting nitty gritty. It is about the inspiration, but it's also about communion. And in its own way, so is the energy of Scorpio. It is about connecting more deeply, more profoundly. With Scorpio, you are changed as a result of allowing yourself to be vulnerable to another. And with Venus here, it's about allowing our hearts to be vulnerable to another. The energy of Pisces with Neptune here, it's about communion. It's about completely merging, losing the self in order to become part of something larger and something bigger. And so these two energies are going to be speaking in supreme harmony. This is going to be a strong energy of spirituality on the one hand. But I think of this as art, as music in particular, the type of music that can move us to tears, the type of uh, divinely inspired creations that evoke strong emotion. Now, in and of themselves, though, with Venus and Neptune, it becomes very easy to get really carried away uh, to the point where we are not grounded, but some grounding is necessary. Grounding ultimately reminds us that we are embodied, that we are human beings, that we are incarnated for a reason, that the earth space, although it is symbolic, although it is a metaphor, although it is an illusion, 
It is still a valuable illusion. It is still part of our existence. And so what do I mean by that? Well, I do think that the point, the reason that we are here, the reason that we choose to incarnate is because we desire to know love and wisdom. We desire to move towards the fuller embodiment of love and wisdom as we move through our lives. And we will all do that in our own way. Some of us do it uh, with more messiness than others might. Some of us make it hard to see that that's what they're doing because their love and wisdom and their journey toward it is hidden under so much pain or so much sadness. But it's there. It's a primordial urge, I do believe. I'm reminded of uh, Freud and Jung. So Carl Jung was a student of Freud and Freud is a sort of widely considered the godfather of psychiatry and uh, psychology as we know it today. And Carl Jung, being his student, you know, they, uh, they tossed around ideas a lot. We can see this in the letters that they wrote to each other, especially. It was uh, Freud who spoke about, especially in the early part of his career, the first part of his career, he spoke extensively about how it is that everything we do, the primordial urge that we have, the primal urge that we have ultimately is uh, libido. It is motivated by libido, motivated by the desire to um, mate with others. But it was Carl Jung who believed and, and who articulated that what it is you are calling libido is essentially the energy of creation. And what it is that we are ultimately looking for when we mate with others isn't about that experience in and of itself, but rather it is so that we can commune with the divine because that is our nature. That is what we are really wanting. We are wanting to know the divine and people become surrogates for that. They step in for that, but ultimately what we are seeking is a, uh, a meeting with our own divine energy, the divine within us, the divine in others. And so this energy of libido is energy of creation and it is the energy of creation that is the energy of the creator and that is what we are truly desiring to know. Now this is my paraphrase, okay? This is my understanding, but this is essentially one of the areas where they disagree which led to their uh, parting ways. So Carl Jung became a very valuable figure, especially for us as astrologers or students of astrology today. Uh, he sought to, in some of his work certainly, uh, find ways to bring legitimacy to what otherwise would be spiritual practice, but he never really could get there. And so he ended up creating, uh, and his students ended up creating uh, their own institutes based on his work that still, especially again for us as astrologers, is hugely influential, hugely insightful as well. This whole idea of archetypal psychology is rooted in the work of Carl Jung and so much more uh, as part of what he did. And so I'm brought back to this, uh, this assertion that Carl Jung made that we are ultimately wanting communion with the creator. That is the primal urge that we have. Well, we are having another energy this week that I think is going to serve as a contrast Whereas Venus, speaking with Neptune, wants to have that sense of spiritual connection, wants to know the Creator, wants an experience of being plugged into Source and the bliss that that brings, it is going to be another energy that starts to set in as we move later and later into the week. Now, uh, specifically, the energy will perfect at the very beginning of next week, However, this is energy that a lot of us are going to be feeling the further we move, especially towards the end of the week, and that is Mars and Saturn. These two planets will be speaking in a connection of tension, what astrologers call a square. Now, I spoke earlier about Mars serving as a contrast to Venus. We have in the early part of the week, Venus connecting with Neptune, connecting with Pluto as well, bringing forward her more sensual, more intense qualities, bringing forward her more inspired artistic qualities. And then we have these very embodied qualities 
of Mars and Saturn trying to figure out a way to get along. They're in a conversation that astrologers call a square. Now this is a conversation of tension, but the thing is, it is also motivation. It is a feeling that something needs to be different and that we have to take action to make it different. And as a result of our action, very often, we're able to manifest in a way that we would not have had it just been trines, had it just been Venus and Neptune. Sometimes Venus and Neptune and trine uh, can be a little overrated. We need Saturn to manifest. We need to contrast that energy, these two energies of Venus and Neptune, to actually ground it and have it count for something in our real existence, in our practical reality. It is ultimately Saturn that helps to do that. So I do like that at the beginning of the week, we have that Saturnian energy there to help us make sure that whatever we feel, whatever connection to source or to self that we feel, we're able to find a way to stay grounded in the process. But what action to take? You know, how is it now that we claim our power and move forward? That is gonna be part of the tension that we move towards as we move towards the very end of the week. Now, for some of us, this energy is gonna feel a little frustrating, if not a lot, and I'm sorry to say that, but it is a part of, ultimately, how we find our power when it is that we don't know how to exercise our power or to figure out where it is we have power and also where we don't, well, cultivating that distinction is how it is, and one way it is that we cultivate wisdom. And so ultimately, it is Mars and Saturn that are gonna help us to do just that, to find our own answers, to cultivate our own wisdom that is uniquely our own, that isn't something that's told to us, but rather something that we experience. But on the way there, yes, there may be some resistance. There may be some tension. There may be some frustration as well. It is Mars right now moving through the sign of Libra. Now here's the thing. Libra is a sign that is ruled by Venus, right? So Libra being ruled by Venus, again, we have that contrast where Venus is in a sign ruled by Mars. We have got Mars in a sign ruled by Venus. And so what do you think that could mean for Mars? Well, chances are the energy ends up getting divided, right? The air signs in general tend to have a very strong duality to them. We can see this in the glyph of Libra. We see scales, right? Scales necessarily have two sides, but then you look at the glyph of Mars itself. It is very singular. It is a circle of wholeness and an arrow arising from that sense of containment, that sense of individuality. And that arrow represents action, acting from that place of self. And so where is it that acting from that place of self, now, how does that work with having to figure out another energy, having to take other things into consideration? And so in this way, Mars energy can become somewhat divided in this sign. And so we've got Venus not as strong because of where she is right now. We've got Mars not as strong, or at least not as easily able to express the things that Mars likes to express in the sign of Libra. And we've got that Mars speaking with Saturn. Now Saturn is in a strong position here as well. It is also in its home sign of Capricorn. And it is also Saturn that is uh, further out, slower moving. So the ancients would say that is the stronger planet here. So where Mars is action, it is direction, it is Saturn that can express some restriction. But it also expresses wise action as well. Action that has some intention behind it. Uh, some understanding of what the end goal is. What is the purpose of the action? What is it that you're hoping to manifest? And to ensure that that action is ultimately grounded, whether that grounding is comfortable or not, that is part of what this particular conversation is meant to inspire within us, an awareness of where it is that we actually can be more wise in the steps that we take. And with Mars in the sign of Libra, we can actually consider that there may be more than one step to take. There may be more than one way to express and to live and to act from a place of truth within us. That sometimes our truth is more complicated. 
It isn't necessarily just about one outcome, just about one thing. But sometimes truth has subtleties and our own truth can be more complicated than we necessarily want to appreciate at times. It is this connection between Mars and Saturn that is going to invite us to explore some of those very complexities. However, at the same time, help us to understand that taking some action, even if that action is to wait, to be restrained, to hold back, sometimes that is how we cultivate the greatest wisdom. What I love about this week for us, well, look, I just love how strong Venus is this week. I love how as we start this week, we have all this beautiful dreamy energy. You know, it is very addictive. Like that's the thing, even the sign of Scorpio, it is one that has to do with obsession. But of course there are healthy obsessions that we can have. And with Venus there, it is about the love of being obsessed of something that is of heart. That is one higher understanding of this energy, of course. We can find other expressions of this energy that maybe aren't as enlightened. But with Venus speaking in harmony with Saturn, speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune and in harmony with Pluto, we are going to be encouraged to find that place of inspiration that we ultimately can bring down to Earth. Connection and communion that helps us to live and manifest something better in our lived experience. Now, of course, with Mars and Saturn, yes, there may be some frustration in what action to take as we move towards the end of the week, but it is just a moment and that moment will pass. And as that moment, as I like to think of it, breaks open, as that moment breaks open, on the other side of it is an authentic sense of self, an authentic sense of freedom. And it is freedom that comes not from responsibility, but rather freedom that comes through responsibility. That is truly that much more rewarding because it honors us. It honors the fact that we are spiritual beings. Absolutely, we have a will and a determination and a drive, but we are incarnated for a reason. We are in our bodies, in this physical plane, on the earth school, as Gary Zuckov calls it, for a reason. And that reason can be an enlightened one grounded here on earth. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, you can log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who got, this is the official advanced copy, right? Isn't that amazing? Thank you to everybody who has purchased an advanced copy. There are 300 people who purchased advanced copies and I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, but what that means is because I promised note cards, I'm gonna be writing a lot of note cards in the next couple of days, slowly starting to mail them out uh, in the coming days as well. I promise to ship these before Halloween, so hopefully people will get them in the month of November, uh, and I hope you absolutely love it. You can pre-order this as an ebook on Amazon right now. Now, if you do pre-order this as an ebook, uh, you have to forward me the receipt if you want the free gift, because I am offering a free gift, which is the meditations. And there are 12 meditations in this book. These meditations are available as downloads uh, and they will be on my website as well for sale as uh, meditation downloads that you can purchase for $19.95 for the set of 12. However, if you get the advanced, uh, the pre-order copy rather, because the advanced sales, yes, they are going to get them, uh, but, the pre-order sales on Amazon. The thing is, I don't know who's buying through Amazon. Amazon keeps that information. If it is that you would like the free gift, you do need to forward me the receipt because a lot of people have been messaging me in different ways and saying, um, I ordered the pre-order, I ordered on Amazon, I'm looking forward to your book when it's released December 9. Uh, and that's great, but we're not seeing the receipts show up. And so without the receipt, no free gift. So please do be sure to forward us that receipt once you have it uh, and you will be put on the list and you will be sure to get the downloads on 
December 9th, the day that the book comes out. And of course, when the book does come out on December 9th, you can purchase the hard copy book. You can purchase the hard copy book uh, on Amazon as well, as well as other uh, booksellers online. And I hope you absolutely love it. This book, The Body and the Cosmos, it is a philosophical and astrological exploration of our physical connection to the sky. And it has a lot of my own, some of my own stories here, but really it was the work of Plato, uh, Plato's Timaeus, that I used as a jumping off point to, uh, to put together my ideas, my thoughts on how it is that each part of our body, each part of our spirit, all of our lessons are ultimately connected to all of the zodiac. And so it is with this book that I hope it affirms that the entire zodiac is a part of you. The entire cosmos is connected to you, that you are connected to everyone and everything, and every part of you is connected to the sky and connected to the divine. So again, I hope you absolutely love it. There's a little bit more time to get it. And again, December 9 is the official launch date. Now, I'm very excited to announce that I'm going to be having a launch party in Florida. The wonderful people uh, at the NCGR group where I will be teaching on Saturday, January 11, if I remember that correctly. Um, the correct date will be up here somewhere. But yes, that Saturday, um, I have a full day event taking place with the wonderful people uh, at the South Florida NCGR group. Thank you so much to them for hosting me. And so, yes, I'm doing a book launch party. It is completely free to attend. You are welcome to join. I will have lots of books on hand that I will be signing, doing selfies. I'll do a short presentation as well, talking about my book uh, that I hope that you enjoy as well. And so that launch party is taking place at 9.30. At 10.30 will be the official uh, group event, which starts with a talk where we explore the 2020s from earth to air. And then in the afternoon, there is a workshop uh, on, I think it's past lives in the astrology chart or life purpose in the astrology chart. It's one of those. It's up here somewhere. But I know it's going to be a lot of fun and it'll have my, you know, universe is wise and loving theme running through all of my work that I do. But yes, please do join us. I will bring, I will try to bring cupcakes and they will be free and attendance is free. Uh, and it will be really nice to meet friends and fans out in Florida. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And we will be leaving the next day. Those of you who are joining me on the cruise event, the next day is when we will board ship and leave. So if you're joining on the cruise, because there are over 60 people who've signed up for the cruise uh, that I will be doing as part of a group of astrologers, uh, it is a, a healing journey. It is a, a journey of transformation, love, joy, hope, and transformation. Over 60 people have joined. All of us are very, very excited to meet each other uh, and to be part of what I truly believe to be a life transforming experience. It is about being out of our comfort zones, being in the middle of the ocean together and being with like-minded people and understanding that we are brought together in perfection, in uh, a certain karmic alliance in order to facilitate love, joy, hope, and transformation in ourselves and in each other as well. And hopefully to take that learning back to our communities, to our sphere of influence and be a force of healing and transformation there as well. So that is the intention. Um, thank you so much to all the people who've signed up through me. And you can learn more about that cruise in the links below. So if you're joining the cruise, you're welcome to come to the book launch party and be part of the big celebration. If it is that you're not necessarily part of the cruise, but you are in Florida and you do want to connect, I would absolutely love that. So please do come to the book launch party. And I will actually be going to Florida a couple days early and I am doing consultations in Florida. Thank you so much to all the people who have reached out. Uh, if it is that you are in Florida and you can come out to Fort Lauderdale, uh, it would be lovely to meet you, to look at your chart, to answer your questions. So we can make that happen. Just use the contact form on my website and uh, and we can get that going. So all the links of everything I've spoken about so far are in the description below. Now, finally, Synchronicity University. Thank you so much to all the students who've signed up and all the people who continue to sign up. I appreciate each and every one of you. So earlier today, we had the class on Astrological Magic Part Two. 
Planetary Magic. It's getting amazing feedback. Thank you so much to all of you who have uh, found value in it already. Uh, and the download links have already gone out as well to the people who have signed up, over 300 people who have signed up for that class. Uh, and thank you to each and every one of you as well. You can still get that class as well as a, a access pass to the autumn session uh, by using the links below, by going to synchronicityuniversity.com. All of the information is there. Next week, it is Astrological Magic Part 3, The Magic in Your Natal Chart. And people were asking during this class I had today on transits to the natal chart and magic. So I'll be sure to incorporate that in the lesson as well. And then the week after, we have Pluto in the astrology chart. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're really going to explore the myth and the astrological understanding in particular of Pluto and what it means in your chart. And we're going to go through each sign and house so that you can further understand how Pluto speaks to you in your natal chart. And then we will have a class on an introduction to electional astrology, which is the astrology of best days, picking the best day for whatever your endeavor is, the best day to, for a wedding, the best day uh, for starting a business and all of that. We will be talking about that as well as I will be revealing in that class what I think is uh, one of the absolute best days for new endeavors, particularly business related endeavors, professional endeavors. What I think is the absolute best day of 2019 of this year. So this year we still got some time to go, right? It's not over yet. And I will be uh, talking about that uh, in that class as well. So I look forward to meeting you in class. Again, thank you to all the students who show up live. Thank you to the students who catch the replay. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I'm sure that we will continue to stay connected. And I'm sure that there will continue to be announcements. I've got lots of events coming up in 2020. In March, I'll be in Istanbul. In May, I will be in Seattle in, and Toronto as well. And I will be in uh, Colorado in September. I've got lots of other events in the works. My schedule is filling up very fast, very fully for 2020. Uh, but I think that I will be where I'm meant to be and I will hug who I'm meant to hug and be where I'm meant to be to connect with people, to share uh, in a spirit of love and wisdom and acceptance with you all. So thank you. Thank you again for being uh, some part of my spiritual journey and for seeing me as some part of yours as well. I'm so grateful for it. And thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.